Hi, I'm Dr. Bart Klicka, the Chief Research and Strategy Officer here at Prevent Child Abuse America. I'm here for a monthly installment of a research review. This month, I take a look at some of the new and emerging research on the topic of abusive head trauma. There have been a number of studies that have come out on the, in the past couple of years looking at the implementation of both programs and policies that look to reduce the incidence of abusive head trauma. The first one was an implementation of the program Period of Purple Crying uh, in the state of North Carolina. In their study, they found that there were no reductions in state levels of abusive head trauma, although they did find uh, reductions in nurse line uh, advice calls related to infant crying. A second study uh, regarding the implementation of a shaken baby syndrome prevention program in the state of Pennsylvania also found no reductions in uh, abusive head trauma hospitalizations, although they did find that as a result of the program, uh, at seven-month follow-up, parents did report um, some knowledge gains associated with the prevention program. A more recent study looking at the implementation of the program Period of Purple Crying uh, in the province of British Columbia, uh, they did find a 35% reduction in hospital admissions for abusive head trauma for children under the age of two years. Now these studies so far have looked specifically at programs to reduce abusive head trauma. But there's also been some examination of policies that may have an effect on reducing abusive head trauma. Uh, this final study by Joanne Clevins uh, looked at paid family leave in the state of California, which was implemented in the year 2004, and looked at whether or not, in comparison to states without paid family leave, there were sub significant reductions. Lo and behold, what they did find is that uh, paid family leave in the state of California was associated with reductions in hospital admissions for abusive head trauma in children under the ages of one and two years old. This is impressive considering that um, as of 2014 in the state of California, uh, participation rates in paid family leave uh, remained low at nearly only 38% uh, of eligible families. As you can see, there's mixed results in some of the science currently on the topic of preventing abusive head trauma. And there's been a number of suggestions as to why these findings might be mixed. Uh, the first one is that some folks say maybe it's just that these programs don't work. And what we're seeing is an artifact of the Zolator and the Diaz study of programs that just might not be effective. Other arguments have been suggested that maybe it's because of the economic recession. And we have studies to show that there were increases in abusive head trauma during the economic recession. And so the studies by Diaz and Zoltor uh, could be impacted by the fact that these were occurring during the economic recession. This is curious considering that during the same period of time as when the Clevins study was examining data about the implementation of paid family leave in the state of California. There's also the issue as to that has been advanced about the timing of these hospital-based uh, approaches to abusive head trauma prevention. Um, I can remember being in the hospital with both of my daughters and, and seeing the video for the period of purple crying, and it's been questioned, is this the best time to actually be giving information to parents right after the birth of their child? Another suggestion is the actual dosage of these programs. In the Diaz study, only approximately 5.7% of eligible families actually re actually received the entire dosage of the program. So there's a question as to whether or not these programs are effective as a result of the dosage of the program that families are receiving. And the final issue has to do with the issue of targets. Are we re reaching the right people with the targets of our interventions? For example, if a majority of the information is being delivered to the mother, um, with these abusive head trauma prevention programs, yet most cases of abusive head trauma are occurring at the hands of a partner or another caregiver in the home, we need to rethink who the targets of our intervention are or how we get the information uh, to those who are going to be very uh, important for the prevention of abusive head trauma. That's all for this research review. If you have suggestions, for future research reviews, please contact me at the email address on the screen. Thank you.